Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today we are in the data center for a little bit because I have some discs that I want to swap around I am um, well I have the the NAS box up here which I want to I want to upgrade I started that in a previous video where I installed a 14 terabyte drive in one of the bays but one 14 terabyte drive in the, the SHR SHR yeah it's, uh, it's not enough to get more space you need two before you get well you, you get the amount of space that these two drives are bigger than the other drives in there so I have four I had four 10 terabytes in there now I have one 14 terabyte and three 10 terabytes so today I want to put in the second 14 terabyte drive and then I will have a two uh, 14 terabytes and two 10 terabytes in there so I will um, add four terabytes to my uh, to my NAS box that way those 10 terabyte drives I'm then gonna put over in my other NAS box which is my it's kind of my offline backup because it's offline <laughs> no, very sophisticated you wouldn't understand <laughs> but <laughs> yeah and the 14 terabyte drive that I'm gonna be putting in there is in a server down here and I have been using that to uh, back up my chia plots and yeah we'll just have a look at that because that is a mess here we have the Hewlett Packard Cloudline CL3100 Generation 3. This is a one u server. I've done multiple videos on it, but it has 12 internal three and a half uh, inch hard drives. And I, I filled this up with all the drives that I had, and I reached 100 terabytes in this server. And that way, I was able to back up my plots from uh, from from another server. But it turns out that some of the drives in here, even though they work, they don't really work because I have at least one drive in there that is extremely slow, like extremely slow. And I have another one that is at the moment not showing up, so it might be dead. And both of them are 10 terabyte drives, so it's uh, more or less it's 20 terabytes of chia plots that I'm not sure that I'm gonna get back. I have been trying to copy chia plots off the extremely slow drive. It takes about a week to get one chia plot off of that. It copies with something like 250 kilobytes a second. And there is pretty far away to uh, a 100 gigabyte chia plot when it's that slow. So, but it has a 14 terabyte drive in there as disk number one. So we're gonna take that out. Also, I have some of the other drives that I have empty that I will also take out and I'll leave drive number four and number five because um, maybe if they are in there alone, they will behave differently. So um, let's shut this down and take that drive out. So over here is the different drives on this server and each of them is just an individual drive on the, on the Hewlett Packard server here. And there's a 14 terabytes and there's a 12 terabytes and then there is a bunch of 10 terabytes, two fours and two threes and a two terabyte to reach 100 terabytes. Um, actually it's 102 terabytes because I, um, I was missing just a little bit to fit the last little chia plots on there so I had to add a, uh, a two terabyte hard drive, a two and a half inch uh, drive. But I've been uh, going through them and checking that I have copied all the chia plots over and they are all there from the drives that I'm going to be taking out and that's those and it's um, it's those down there. Um, yeah, this is really irritating that I have two drives in the middle that is teasing me but yeah, I'm at least going to take out the first four drives and then I'm going to take out the smaller drive down here. I might leave some of these in there. So let's shut this server down. Shutting down. So we should get less noise. 
I like this noise. Awesome. So this server is available at, at Bakken Hardware and it's very cheap right now. I think they have a lot of them. Just look how long that is, it's ridiculous. But this server starts at 24 pounds. It's not gonna stay at that price for very long because as soon as you put stuff in it, it increases in price. But uh, yeah, the, the configuration of the server starts at that very low price. I configured a server just for fun and giggles and uh, I managed to get a fully functional server with all the drive trays for about 125 pounds. So that means that it was ready for all the drives. It did not have the rate controller down here though. Um, that is rather expensive, but it would be able to run nine drives, which is, I believe is how many SATA connections there are on the system board. Uh, this is a lot of drives. So yeah, we need to remove some of them. So the, the 14 terabyte drive is this one. And this is the 12 and 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Uh, four four three three so these are done these are done we're gonna leave those in oh, I guess yeah so unlock this is drive number one and it has this very smart system here oh dude did I really put in all those screws I shouldn't have oh that's gonna take forever oops I messed up um this drive was really is the really really slow one it was sitting over here and this was drive one two three four so i thought that well i messed up so this one and this one is problematic i think these are good and these i have just removed and yeah this is a really um, it's a really awesome form factor of a server it has two good cpus down here or room for two good cpus and there's room for 16 slots of memory so um, it's like you have the server here and all the rest is just disk space and a couple of power supplies so uh, I do recommend the server if you have somewhere to place it where you don't have to listen to it because it's loud but uh, it's cheap but loud and you get 5% off of bargain hardware if you use the coupon code or check out code my playhouse small letters links in the description Let's see. Ow. It's really long. Did I mention that it's loud? I hurt myself when I took it in. I got my finger pinched in the rails. That thing there is not good, the rest is. So these are the drives that I took out. And if you watch here, you can see that this line, there's no break in it. That means that these are SAS drives, where over here we have the, 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 well, the long one is the power connection and the short one is the signal connection. And there is a slot in between them. So this is a, a SATA drive and these are SAS drives. So, um, yeah, that's why this one goes in the in the NAS because the NAS only takes SATA drives and uh, yeah, otherwise it wouldn't work. Okay, after starting the server up again and uh, getting a blue mark on my finger, uh, drive number five, disk five over here, showed up again, and there is some plots on there that I haven't copied over. Uh, I don't know if this is gonna work, but we're gonna try. So we're just gonna start that. And at the moment it's copying okay fast. And now it's not. So yeah. Definitely a bad drive because the good drives, they were very quick at copying everything over. So I'll let this run. We don't have to bother with this anymore. Just shut this down. So up here on the NAS, I'm going to be replacing this disk. Last time I upgraded that one, now I'm going to be upgrading that one. Um, I just, let's, this, is, uh, this is the last, uh, this is the 10 terabyte that I took out last time, uh, which is going in the other NAS. So let's just uh, take the disk out of this tray and reuse that tray and, and put that in tray two up there. 
Just came to see how remarkably alike these drives are. This is a high-end Enterprise Hewlett Packard drive and this one is a um, USB drive that came out of a cage. They even have the same number here. Uh, so these are HTST drives, so they're actually Hitachi drives. Must be both of them. So yeah, it's not not necessarily the worst quality that are in those USB boxes. So let's have the screws out. So we have a 14 terabyte drive ready to go. Oh dear. Okay, so we are ready for this job and I can't stress this enough. When you're upgrading your NAS, it's very important to do the right thing. If I take out the wrong drive, I can't just put it back in and say, oh, that, and everything is good. I have to take out the right drive and, and not put it in anywhere else. I have to only do one change. So we're going to be taking this one out and when I do that it's going to be complaining. One, two, check. There, this should be another 10 terabyte. Looks exactly like the one that we are replacing. I'm just sitting it here. It should start beeping now. There we are. It's, it's, it's pissed at me. So now I'm going to take the other one in, the 14 terabyte. Gonna stuff that in there, and it doesn't do anything automatically like an enterprise server would do. We need to go to the computer and tell it what to do. So, at the computer, we log into the NAS and we try again with the right password. Yeah, that did the last little bit. And because it's degraded here and it has an error, it shows up with the storage manager telling me right away that there is something wrong. So let's shut some of the other stuff down here. So we, uh, we see only what we need to see here. In here we need to go into storage pools, there. And it tells us here that our storage pool is, um, is not doing too good. So we need to take action and repair. And it has this new drive that it's just found. That's really weird how that just happens to be there, but it does. So we're gonna pick that one because we need to repair our stuff here. So next, and it tells us that everything is gonna go bye-bye. We are fine with that. And uh, we're gonna do that. And there is a couple of buttons that you need to, um, to press to uh, tell it that it's all good. And there we are. It has added the second drive, which is uh, not initialized. It will be initialized in just a little bit. There we are. It's initialized. It's going to be shuffling all my data around. So this new drive have everything. And it's going to tell me up here how far ahead in this process we are. Right now it's not very far ahead. On these big drives it takes a very long time to shuffle all this data around. It's terabytes and terabytes. So. Um, I'm gonna not mess with it too much while it's doing that. But over here on the other side of the living room, I have my, um, my offline NAS. This is my old NAS from my apartment in Aarhus when I lived there. I turn it on and then I use it for backing up my, uh, my files, which is in large regard is these uh, YouTube videos. Yeah, it's not exactly running out of space, but well, those 10 terabytes are better than, than what else is in here. So let's see what else is in there. While I'm sitting at the computer and can't figure out why I can't connect to it, well, maybe I should put in the cable for it. It's very secure. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it, not only is it off, it's also not connected when I'm not using it. So it's a good offline backup. Okay, it actually also says that it needs more space, but there is still roughly a little bit less than five terabytes available so let's see what drives are in here 
there we have a 10 terabyte and 10 terabyte 4 terabyte 8 terabyte 8 terabyte 4 terabyte 8 terabyte and 4 terabyte so um yeah should probably replace one of those 4 terabytes to get the most out of this also at some point i have a shindle magnetic drive in there apparently not good for nasus but nevertheless it has been running in there for years and years so i think we should just replace drive number three here and have that four terabyte out of there so now i'm going to be doing something that i will highly not recommend um i am already updating one of my storage systems and now i'm going to be updating the backup of that storage system and that is really stupid so uh, just just to tell you that i do know that this is stupid um, this drive that I am putting in is not the drive that I just took out. This is a drive that I took out when I replaced the first, uh, the, well this one, with a 14 terabyte drive a few weeks back. So that has long time rebuilt. Also, I need to do this when the box is online uh, because there is already a Synology setup on this drive. So. Uh, that could mess up if I put this drive in there with a competing Synology file system then maybe it thinks that this one is the ruling drive and then it want to make everything else uh, what this drive is doing so that is also I, I should really clean this as long as I do it when the system is up and running it knows that the system that it is running is the right one so we're gonna take out drive number three and I'm gonna, I'm gonna double check. Yeah, drive number three, which is this one. We're gonna take that out, and it's gonna be complaining. Oh, this is, <laughs> this is dusty. Yeah, Hitachi drive number three. So apparently we are putting in another Hitachi drive. <laughs> so this is not rocket science. Uh, on the on the sides there's a plastic thing here that you take out it has some knobs there that goes in and locks the hard drive in place that 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 thing there and when we take those out in each side the drive comes out there is some rubber things in here that that makes it a little bit shock resistant so let's see, let's put that in and then we put this in again. So this upgrade will give me approximately six extra terabytes. So that is awesome. And we'll put this back in, <laughs> into this whining bitch. So that it has something new to look at. Holy moly. Oops. <coughs> My, um, my shelving unit, <laughs> I'll fix that. Yeah, normally that would be where we would cut to commercials. But <coughs> Bargain hardware. <laughs> nah. Okay, uh, it's just sitting on this thing. So <laughs> yeah, that was a, it got a little too much out of balance. So let's, uh, let's tell it on the computer what to do with that drive. So here we are at the computer and we can see that it has already recognized that it has a new 9.1 terabyte hard drive in there well, we need to go up to pools again it's complaining something isn't good it's missing those 3725 gigabytes where are they so <laughs> yeah we'll give it a new one it's again it's really simple uh, action repair oh we have a new drive cool use that next are you sure continue yes it will, um, well, it will give us that amount of space. Awesome, continue or apply in this case. And we can even hear it stop beeping in the background. Well, and then it stopped beeping and we can't hear it now. And it's gonna be working on that forever and ever. It's initializing here, that will be done shortly there normal and it will also be uh, 
shuffling data around so that so the security is back up. It's uh, running this hybrid RAID SHR and uh, yeah unfortunately that is really good. You can see how I'm mixing different drives here 10 terabytes, 8 terabytes and 4 terabytes. Let's check the other NAS, see how far that has gotten. It has thrown me off because I've been inactive. How rude. Okay, it has reached 0.35% out there in the data center. So it's also working hard on it. Here in the data center, uh, you can see what a slow drive is like. 350 kilobytes a second. So it's gonna take more than a day to move those um, well, it's 1.58 terabytes of plots over. So yeah, that's a that's a drag. So more or less, this video was just me being a disc jockey, moving discs from one place to another place and playing some tracks, uh, plots, whatever. Hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions, do leave them in the comments below and um, give this video a like. And uh, what else could I ask of you? Um, maybe visit my Patreon and uh, support me that way. These drives are expensive, but yeah, never mind. But you can also visit my little shop where I try to sell you stuff, which also gives me new stuff to play with, so make videos. In this video, I didn't really put anything new in. I just shoveled old stuff that I already had around. But some of these videos are expensive, so uh, do visit my little shop and see if I have something that you need. But yeah, thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again. And have a really nice day. Bye bye.